Beijing may never have imagined that a female athlete could stir up a storm of unprecedented magnitude. As you know, according to, to available information, um, Peng, uh, the, the former world, world doubles uh, number one, uh, hasn't been heard from publicly since she alleged on social media uh, that she had been uh, sexually assaulted. Um, so really, um, we would stress that, that it's important to, to, to know that, that she, you know, where she is and, and, and you know, her state, you know, know about her well-being. Uh, and as I said, uh, we think it would be important that there's an investigation uh, into her allegations of sexual assault, which she made against a former vice premier of China, Zhang Zhaoli. On November 3rd, 2021, Chinese tennis player Peng Shuai posted on Chinese social media, Weibo, and accused the former Chinese vice premier, Zhang Gaoli, 75 years old, of sexual assault. The Post described in thousands of words the long relationship she had with him and accused that he left when he was done playing around. The Post stayed online for 20 minutes before it was deleted and all traces of it were erased from mainland China's entire internet. Peng herself has been missing since. It's common in China for people to be disappeared. No matter how big or serious a social event is, the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, can easily remove it from the media and the internet, getting it out of people's sight. We have featured Peng Shuai's story in a previous episode. Please see it in the link below the video. Uh, Chinese tennis player Peng Shuai made allegations on Weibo against former Vice Premier Zhang Guoli. The allegations and subsequent discuss discussion of them have all been censored from the internet. Do you have any comment to make on the allegations or on the censorship? Thank you. But this time, Beijing has a big problem on hand. On November 14th, Steve Simon, CEO of the International Women's Tennis Association, issued a public statement asking for clarification on Peng Shuai's current whereabouts and calling on China to investigate her allegations against the former vice premier Zhang Gaoli. The next day, the International Men's Tennis Association quickly followed suit, with its president issuing an official statement supporting the investigation into Peng Shuai's case. The United States Tennis Association also issued a similar statement. At almost the same time, many tennis players, including superstars, spoke out in pursuit of Peng Shuai and demanded answers from the Chinese authorities. I support the statement of uh, WTA, uh, as an organization and also their president, absolutely. I, I think, uh, you know, it, it, this, this can obviously happen to anybody. I mean, this is not common thing, obviously. We don't hear about it. Had China insisted on dismissing these voices, perhaps the outcry would have died down. But surprisingly, the Chinese Global Television Network, or CGTN, the CCP's international propaganda media, responded at a crucial time, tweeting a screenshot of an email in English from Peng Shuai to WTA President Simon saying she was fine, and in turn questioning why the WTA had released the news without her approval. An email purporting to be addressed to Simon started strangely with, Hello everyone. The screenshot of the email shows a cursor in the middle of the word and in the third line, indicating that the email wasn't sent yet but was in the process of being edited when CGTN took the screenshot. This glitch drove the case to a fever pitch. Simon immediately issued a statement in response saying that it was difficult to believe the authenticity of the email. Then the International Tennis Federation, the highest body governing the sport, broke more than 10 days of silence and issued a statement saying that the player's safety was its top priority and that it supported a full and transparent investigation into the matter. The International Olympic Committee, or IOC, remained optimistic and said in a statement on Thursday, November 18th, that we have seen the latest reports and are encouraged by assurances that she is safe. But the global tennis community, including current and retired players, coaches, and journalists, has been asking questions about Peng's whereabouts, as have other well-known sports stars and actors. 
with top tennis players Serena Williams, Naomi Osaka, Novak Djokovic, and Swiss tennis superstar Roger Federer speaking out, where is Peng Shuai? It became a collective question, creating a powerful storm of opinion. Many people tweeted the hashtag, where is Peng Shuai, with photos of Peng. I'm really glad that there was a, a kind of a, an initiati initiated reaction from uh, both ATP and WTA chairmen, and uh, it's important uh, because this is horrifying. I mean, uh, th this is necessary for us to, to, to take whatever actions, and I heard that just now from Reem that uh, WTA is willing to pull out from China, I mean, with all the tournaments, unless this is resolved. I support it 100%. I mean, I, I hope that for, you know, for the sake of tennis and, and, chi and Chinese tennis and Peng uh, Shuai to, to find her very soon because th this is uh, it's terrible. I mean, this could happen to anybody in any part of the world. And uh... at this point, the Beijing government could no longer respond like an ostrich with its head buried in the sand. Peng Shuai to WTA chairman saying it is all right and saying she's all right and that the allegation of sexual assault is untrue. So I understand you've said this is not a foreign affairs matters, but given the international attention this case has attracted, surely the foreign ministry must be aware of what's happening. Can you tell us anything about where Peng Shuai is? Is she in Beijing? Is she free to move around? Or is she under the supervision of authorities? Also, is the foreign ministry concerned that this case would affect China's image, especially in the run-up to the Beijing Winter Olympics? Thank you. Hi, you Guan Yu Peng Shuai's question, ma? Please, you all repeat. Hello, my answer is very simple. This is not a foreign question. I do not have the details of the situation. In addition to international organizations, the case of Peng Shuai has now begun to spill over to the government level. In a press briefing on November 19th, White House spokesperson Pasaki said the U.S. was very concerned about the situation of Chinese tennis player Peng Shuai and called for Chinese authorities to provide independent verifiable proof of Peng's whereabouts. On November 18th, Australian Defense Minister Peter Dutton also said in an interview with Australia's 2GB radio station that there was deep concern about Peng Shuai's safety. He argued that the incident had many unexplained questions and there had been other similar cases in China where people went missing for long periods of time after criticizing the CCP. Some of them reappeared later and he hoped the same would happen to Peng Shuai. The British Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office issued a statement saying it was extremely concerned about Peng and called on the Chinese authorities to urgently provide verifiable information about her personal safety and well-being. Honestly, uh, it's a very scary situation and um, it's really scary world out there. and. I'm very sad about it. Um, I don't know what to think and uh, I just hope that she's okay and I want to hear some good news from her uh, really soon. And um, yeah, uh, it's very strange what, what's happening and it's not normal. It's a very super delicate eh, y bueno, y ojalá la encuentren, pero la verdad que no sé mucho de este tema, solo sé que denunció al que era el expresidente o el ex vicepresidente, pero no la encuentran y bueno, ojalá ojalá que la lleguen a encontrar. Subsequently, Peng Shuai has actually appeared again. On November 19th, a China Global Television Network or CGTN reporter tweeted some photos saying they were the latest photos shared by Peng's friends and screenshots of Peng's WeChat circle of friends, adding that Peng had written Have a Good Weekend on the post. What's difficult to explain is that the CGTN editor-in-chief got the news and had it published on a personal account, yet the CGTN's official Twitter account didn't tweet or retweet it. The editor-in-chief of China's official media, Global Times, republished the photos, 
noting that through his sources, he was able to confirm that the photos were indeed the latest on Peng's situation. The editor-in-chief, Hu, added, In the past few days, she stayed in her own home freely, and she didn't want to be disturbed. She will show up in public and participate in some activities soon. The photos have been under the public scrutiny. Some online comments pointed out that with the current cold weather in Beijing, even if the heat was turned on indoors, it was unlikely that an average person would be dressed as thinly as Peng Shui in the photos. In addition, from the revealed photos, one can see that Peng Shui's WeChat account name is Peng Shui Tu. People familiar with the Chinese dialect will know that Tu has the meaning of fool in the dialect of northern China. It's hard to imagine that anyone would use this kind of name among friends and relatives in China. Choosing it for one's WeChat account name is likely to be considered dumb. Perhaps CGTN isn't doing well at its job. The latest person to step forward to help the Chinese government explain Peng's whereabouts is the editor-in-chief of Global Times. On November 20th, Hu tweeted out two videos of Peng and her friends gathering at a restaurant in Beijing. Steve Simon, president of the Women's Tennis Association, said the video published on the 20th was not enough to prove her safety. Online users noticed that part of the date was blurred out in these videos. On November 21st, Hu uploaded another video saying that Peng attended the opening ceremony of the Beijing Youth Tennis Final that morning in an obvious attempt to prove that Peng was safe. Far from appeasing the public's doubts and concerns, this wave of disturbing activities is a little cumbersome. In mainland China, it's very easy for people to pick up their cells to perform a live broadcast. If Peng Shui intends to confirm that her situation is as described in her email, all she needs to do is to speak directly in front of the camera. A key message we can actually take away from Beijing's responses is that Peng Shui is likely still holding out in resistance under tremendous pressure from the authorities. Precisely because Peng refuses to cooperate, the authorities are unable to get her to appear on camera. Instead, they have to use words and photos as an emergency to fend off a bit of international public pressure. Only two and a half months remain before the unveiling of the Beijing Winter Olympics, which is a huge vanity project for the CCP. Peng Shui's incident has now become the biggest black swan event affecting the project. Pound, the longest serving International Olympic Committee member, told Reuters, if that's not resolved in a sensible way very soon, it may spin out of control. Whether that escalates to a secession of the Olympic Games, I doubt it, but you never know. Peng accused former Vice Premier Zhang Gaoli. Zhang Gaoli is a key member of former party leader Jiang Zemin's group, a political rival of Xi Jinping. Former Communist Party leader Jiang originally designated Bo Xilai as his successor. Bo is currently in jail. According to a former correspondent for Hong Kong media who now lives in Canada, Bo was involved with numerous women. Among them, the oddest case concerns a TV hostess in Dalian whose fate is still unknown. The hostess was kicked out of the TV station after she publicized her affair with Bo. Some of her friends have been secretly searching for her for years, but have not yet found her. You can still find online entries about her on Google and Baidu in China, but in real life, she has vanished and no one knows her whereabouts. Who was the pivotal figure that finally put Bo in jail and made Xi Jinping the next party leader? It was Bo's subordinate and close ally, Wang Lijun, the head of the Public Security Bureau in the city of Chongqing. 
In 2012, after a dispute in which Bo slapped Wang in the face, Wang fled to the U.S. Consulate General in Chengdu, disguised as a woman carrying a large amount of incriminating evidence against Bo. This incident changed Bo's fate. A year later, in September 2013, Bo was sentenced to life in prison for bribery, corruption, and abuse of power, and he remains in prison today. In the same year, Hu Jintao stepped down as the national leader and Xi Jinping became the seventh president of the People's Republic of China and the fifth Communist Party leader. Will Peng Shuai become the next Wang Li Jun? Will it trigger a chain reaction in the political arena in China? No one knows for sure, but given what China is today, anything is possible.